Now, light is one of the most underused natural resources on the planet. Scientists say light from the sun, for example, can be used in many different ways to improve the quality of life. Light-based technologies such as ultraviolet rays and solar technology can aid in solving many of life's complex challenges. To draw attention to the many uses of light, scientists have declared 2015 as the International Year of Light. Hano Dame has more. Light is a gift from God to mankind. Some countries have tapped into this natural resource to develop in areas of science, technology, education, the arts, and culture. But what is the situation in Ghana? Talk about light is something that Ghana has been using, but other countries are using it in a higher realm. And that is where we want Ghana to get to. Because now people don't use candles, people are using LEDs, you call it organic type of LEDs now. Instead of just using chemicals to produce the light, they are now using one natural resource, like organic materials to produce the light. And that is where we want Ghana to go. To ensure Ghana uses this natural resource effectively, the Education Ministry, in collaboration with UNESCO, has launched the International Year of the Light in Ghana. The International Year of the Light is a United Nations endorsed initiative that focuses on the use of light-based technologies to promote sustainable development and provide solutions to global challenges in energy, education, agriculture, and health. In Ghana, the objective is to use light to develop fields of medicine, communication and homes, amongst others. Local committee member of the initiative, Professor Paul Kingsley Boabasa, explains to Joy News how this concept will be realized. This is where the 21st century is looking at this technology and uh, the way it behaves is different from the concept of electronics that we know and it can cut through many areas of application which the electronics cannot do. That is the sole reason why it's relevant and appropriate to celebrate it in Ghana and in Africa. You keep, you keep, talking, about, we, you keep talking about using light to solve problems in arts, communication, and Greek medicine. How exactly would that be done? In art, for instance, if you get to artifacts and paintings, we are able to use light to restore and to authenticate the paintings and the artworks, which means that if you have museums, even if there are artworks which you are about to lose, you can use it to restore the paintings. In our cultural heritage, we can use some of the nuclear radiations to be able to judge our artifacts, poetry and other things, to know the age at which the archaeological things date from. Then if you go to the science and technology, you realize that we need the photonics in the area of medicine. Whilst other countries are trying to exhaust the use of light, such as lasers, in this direction, Ghana is lacking in almost the whole of Africa. So this is the time we have to perfect our health delivery in this direction. When you come to communications, it's not meant to use mobile phones for WhatsApp. Mobile phones are meant for internet connectivity, get data and work with it. As we are aware now, internet connectivity in Africa is at the lowest ebb. The traffic is non-existent. So it's up to us to try and see how best we can let internet connectivity be appreciated and help our development. Then lastly in agriculture, we have been able to use laser-induced fluorescence on chlorophyll to see how maturity, crop yield, and other vegetables can be looked at. For example, watermelon and others. 
Launching the year-long program in Ghana, Education Minister Professor Jean Nana Opokwajiman said an upgrade of the laser and fiber optics center, the Solar Technology Research Center in Ghana, will enhance study and promotion of solar science. The emergence of light-based technologies has allowed scientists and industrialists to improve energy, agriculture, health, and generate employment and create wealth. Ghana's initiative, which has resulted in the celebration of the Year of Light in 2015, has brought into the limelight the need to explore further the potentials of light to improve livelihood, build communities, and connect people in many ways. As indicated in my State of the Nation address to Parliament on 26th of February this year, my government has made tremendous effort to put clean energy at the doorsteps of the rural folks as part of our commitment to fully incorporate renewable energy into our energy supply mix. A number of solar, wind, tidal wave and biomass projects are being pursued. Harvesting the sun's energy by using solar panels have seen enormous installations of solar pumps to pump water, solar light to power some rural clinics, as well as solar power plants serving the needs of people. Mr. Chairman, as we are aware, the efficiency of solar cells is limited by the appropriate material to enhance efficiency. It is in this light that I'm happy to note that as part of the outcomes for the celebration of the year in Ghana, there are already plans to invest in research and development in the technology. We are looking forward to establishing a solar technology research center to reduce the cost of solar power generation and to meet the challenges confronting the technology. Such an investment is expected to boost the spread of the use of solar power in the country. Leading telecom service provider MTN Ghana plans to invest over 400 million Ghana cities in its operations as part of moves to mitigate challenges in the business environment, compounded by the power crisis. Speaking to Joy Business at the company's annual editors' forum, Chief Executive Officer Serami Tokumbo said the company has had to re strategize, especially in the wake of the power crisis, to avert laying off some of its workers. Everybody else um, in Ghana, we are, we are feeling the effect of, of the short-term impact of the economy. Uh, but I've also, like we stated clearly, uh, we've taken a long-term view in terms of our investment and our role um, in Ghana. And like every other industry, we're going to have to, you know, cut our cloth to, to fit our size. With the viewers saying, of course, this 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 period shall pass uh, as well. And I think it's about continuing to invest in the economy so that when the economy does come back, we're not found wanting in terms of the capacity we have in our network. So we announced today, for instance, that just on network uh, elements alone, over $85 million being spent on, on network. If you look at total IT uh, and network, 460 million CDs being spent this year alone. And that's a key thing for us that we will continue to build and expand our network so that when the economy recovers, we're not caught wanting, but we are ready for that upliftment. Businesses in general continue to complain about the negative impact of key economic variables such as the city depreciation on their operations. This has compelled some of them to downsize and lay off some of its workforce. MTN says the power crisis has seen it lose some 25 million Ghana cities, which was unbudgeted for. If, if you just take the example of diesel alone, yeah, I'll say to you that um, roughly last year or before the, the surge, we were consuming less than a million litres of diesel uh, a month. It's now up to two million uh, litres a month. I mean, I think if you just take the local price of, of diesel and multiply that, it means your diesel prices have actually doubled um, compared to the year before. And I think those are the kind of uh, uh, numbers that you're looking at. Mm -hmm. The MTN Editors Forum brought together news editors, representatives from the Ghana Media Commission, Ghana Journalists Association and other media organizations.